Hey, Peter. Hey. What do you know about this? That's nifty, but what about this? Oh, how about... Well, what about... Very nifty. Deploy now! <laughs> Bebop, deploy! I'm Adam Annis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It Podcast. Daily music advice coming at you. Coming at you today. We're sponsored by Open Studio. Go to Open Studio Jazz for all your jazz <laughs> needs. I've been really into that. I'm sorry. I'll have to stop. You no, know, no, we get on these trains, you know, where you see it with your eyes first. And then you hear it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We've been, we, we get into these, uh, these patterns of things really? and I'll try to, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, so why are we talking about deploying bebop tactics? Are we about to go oh. on a bebop, uh, like, War. I don't know, but I am feeling like speaking of things that we've gotten on. Drop down and give me seven bebop tactics right now. Oh, the drill sergeant thing. Yeah, I drill sergeant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, when I see the word deploy and tactics, I think like deploy, deploy, deploy. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was trying to come up with that. Well, no, I thought that this would be a nifty way to to. I don't know. You know, we just having fun. Oh, there's probably some military <laughs> people listening right now, being like, "My God, what I don't, are these guys I don't like about? always doing the seven grade bebop licks for your jazzy affair. I don't. I, you know, we're, we're trying to go next level here. Well, this certainly is. <laughs> All right, so this was this episode was your brainchild, and let's not oversell it, buddy. Okay, well, I mean uh, it's obvious with the word nifty, <laughs> but uh, I don't even know what that means. I don't. Yeah, I think it means neat. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do seven like fairly nifty bebop sounds is what I'm guessing, right? Right. Like like. Oh wait, let me look. Is the name of it seven fairly nifty bebop? I think it's seven nifty. Okay. So let's 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 be a little and more these confident. Are, these are tactics or strategies. <laughs> yes. Are these? Is this a front? What is this? <laughs> well, I do think um, the platoon. You know, tactics. We you know strategies makes it sound like so. Um, like a bigger scale thing. I'm going to have a, st- I mean, really your strategy is just to sound good on every solo. That's right, your strategy. Right, right, right. Tactics. I think I always think of it as a little bit smaller, a little bit more micro, a little bit more meta. Uh, these are like little specific things that are not about, like you don't want to take these, any of these ideas and repeat them over and over again yeah. because you'll be in danger of using this as a tactic. So, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Which is it. not one of our nifty, that's one of our stale tactics. No, but these are little ones for you to try out. And these would definitely be good ones. And, and you know, some of them were kind of coming to my mind from the 30 day challenge in January where I was practicing things in 12 different keys. I did a couple of bebop ones, and I would consider those little nifty bebop tactics that you could apply. Really, as always, these are things to get into your ears, to get into your hands. Mm-hmm. If you like them, make that connection. Love it. And then let it be part of the flow of your bebop playing. And not only like, oh, I'm on a bebop tune. No, bebop is just, it's a part of the language that we can pull out in any situation. I mean, I was just listening to some, some Stevie Wonder, uh, what was it? Some kind of Stevie Wonder where he sort of soul and he pulled out a little bit of bebop oh, yeah. over like a funk groove, you know, oh, yeah. on the on the keys a little bit. So it. it's a part of our it's a part of our language, just like you know blues and, yeah, yeah. and different things. All right, well let's commence the operation. Commence deployment. Number one, <laughs> you have the double surround dopio. What <laughs> the hell is that? I just named that because you know we we're trying to be nifty. So what this is? Let me play it. One, two, three, four. Oh, do that again. Do that again. It's all fancy. Well, that can be anything. It's really just the way I'm starting. And you can use it in many mm-hmm. different ways. Yeah. So a lot of people know about the surround. But what makes it dopio, double shot, mm. is... So we're C minor, light up keyboard, where you're at flying Vs. What? So you've got... Um, your C minor 7. So we're thinking about that jazz arpeggio. Yeah. So, and this could be two, five, one. It could be wherever you want to go. But um, as opposed to just, a lot of times we'll do the surround, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, that's a two. That's a chromatic surround with two chromatic notes. surround, or even like a whole step on top and a half step below. So this is dopio because you're going two half steps below, mm-hmm. and then you're going two up and coming down. Oh, that's and even one below again. Yeah. Ooh. Or it could be. Woo! It's fancy. Yeah. I like going back b- below again too. Yeah. yeah. But you can do it in the middle of a line, too. Oh, man. Dopio. That's like a quadro, like, like, like a quadro deployment right I there. I love that one. On, I, Drop down and give me two dopios. You know what's cool style. about this one? So we're going we're gonna to do six more. But, okay. you know, most of the ones we're talking <laughs> this about. This dude, math. 
They yeah. talk about Andrew Yang now yeah. that he dropped yeah. out of the race. Well, we're going to put a math thing on you, man. <laughs> no, you know what it is? So what's great about starting with this one is this kind of has most of the kinds of bebop <laughs> surrounds that you would use all encompassed in this one. Like there's yeah. the chromatic, there's the from the whole step. And we'll get into it. We'll break these down even further as we get into it. But this is a great one to learn first because you're kind of getting all of it. And you can take away or add as you need to. It's great. And then as with all these, and we'll try to remember and highlight it as we go, but think about the rhythms. That's why I counted it off. One, two, three, four. So that's starting on what is that, the end of four. But if yeah. you like th th these usually like how they can kind of work and giving you ideas for implementation of deployment would be based upon if you're starting on, I mean, on a general basic level, on the beat or on the upbeat mm. when we're in 4-4 four, four with eighth notes. So if I did the same thing starting on the beat, one, two, three, four, or like it's a very different sound than one, two, three, four, stu do be diddly. One, two, three, four, stu bo diddy do bo bo do. You can delay. You I can mean, delay. a lot of fun things. I think, yeah, we get a lot of questions about like what chord tone should be on the strong beats or whatever. And like, whatever the thing you is, want. Exactly right. Like, you can, and, and often the master of this music, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Thelonious Monk, would delay these or set these in places that were a little unexpected. It doesn't always have to be so symmetrical. Absolutely. And, and I mean, when you really start to analyze and understand advanced bebop um, language, mm -hmm. um, and like, as you say, from the masters, that Dizzy Gillespie, a Thelonious Monk, a Bud Powell, obviously, that, you know, that goes on and on. But like... They're, they seem to have such a huge varied vocabulary, and they do, but a bunch of them are kind of subsets with rhythmic displacements and different approaches starting at different beats, but the same kind of like harmonic approach to how they're using the melody. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's varied, but there's kind of like, there's a continuity in there if you learn some of these. Just be open-minded about how you deploy them and know that there's many different possibilities there based awesome. upon the rhythm. Awesome, awesome. All right, number two is chromatic. Yes, chromatic. Okay, now talk about ones that can be used in a lot of different situations. This one is probably the closest to like, as opposed to a specific dopio like last time, more of a mindset one. Ooh. You know, there. Yeah. The key to this, I think, is not to just run. It's, I know it sounds like I am just starting out running a chromatic scale. But how these work is how you get out of them when you leave the chromaticism. Yeah, yeah. What rarely works would be like one, two, three, four. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's all right, but check weird. this out. One, two, three, four. Ooh, yeah, that's Kind of come out of it. Yeah, so, yeah. But you want to get the chromatic thing, and you can go kind of next level with this. I know this is not technically chromatic, but if you're thinking about it, broken thirds on a chromatic scale. That's why yeah. it's so important to, like, as a pianist, and whatever your instrument is, trumpet, you know, it's like really, you know, uh, broken fifths on the yeah, chromatic. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Thinking of this as a pianist, when we yep. get into this kind of chromatic thing, like there's because the chromatic scale can hit that thumb almost at any white key, right? Yeah. There's natural places for little turnarounds, and that could be a way to get out of it. So don't think you have to go straight from this to like a into something else. Right. Like you can literally do these turns when you hit your thumb. Uh, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a natural thing to do. It's natural, and it, you know it highlights. You know, always with the chromatic, you can actually highlight. You think it's going atonal, but it doesn't have to be. If you're like, hey, watch your mouth. Oh, atonal. Okay, sorry. You know, if you highlight different scale tones. Oh, that's awesome. A lot of times you hear that Charlie Parker, like on, on ballads and stuff, a lot of All chromaticism, right. but he's got such a great feel for the harmony. You know? Awesome. All right, number three, you have double diminished melodic throwdown. Come what on. Is that I don't remember. <laughs> double Oh, this is double diminished. Oh yeah. Okay. So this one is um um So this Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, I was going. So in the key of B flat, we're thinking about the B flat major to two five back to B flat major. Yeah. So what's that first one? What's the first one? It's just a B flat. Uh-huh. Diminished triad with the major seven, and then take that up a half step. So B flat, D flat, E, A. Yep. And then go up a minor third oh, to I D gotcha. flat. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're kind of like, and you, this could also be like a C7 maybe, and then C minor seven. Yeah. You could got you that keep, option. Could you do E then after that? It's all legal, buddy. Yep. Yeah, and you can be like... The idea is you're just taking some of that diminished, but not just a straight, because that's yeah. a little corny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that gives you some melodic ideas. 
Well, that's nice. You know, however you're going to kind of come out of it. Woo. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay. Bam. Double diminished melodic throwdown. Drop a... down and deploy. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That was the throwdown. Would you get of kicked some out of the sort. army if you tried some of these techniques? I think so. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think yeah, they yeah. allow bebop in the yeah. army anymore. No. Uh, number four is triplets of various usage. So, how, how are bebop players using triplets that you okay. like, like yeah. straight ahead or modern players? So, this is one that's kind of basic, and you think, oh, I know that. Okay. Oh, let's go. I'm a basic guy. Yeah, me too. So, you've got like. See. Oh yeah. So when you're like the the triplet in the middle of a phrase, I think is important. That's a really important use. So do Now yeah. you can start out your phrase do or That's a little bit can be a little corny, but if you. That's great. So one of the ones I did in the intro. This is something I transcribed from. I think it was Bud Powell years ago, but it has this great triplet in the middle of the phrase. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the usage of the triplet like that is so different. It almost sounds like a different approach, but it's it's rhythmically the same as. But if we're going do as opposed to like going in one direction, yeah, yeah, up, yeah. down, boo boo, or you know, you know, down and then up. Up and then down, one direction. Other Would you direction. consider the the sixteenth like turn to be a part of this family too? Like a, it's a little yeah, faster. It's a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still kind Clifford of the same. Clifford Brown vibe. busted out a lot of the Fat Fats Navarro. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. but Powell for sure. He did kind of went through both of them, and and there's it's not a right or wrong, but it's fun to kind of identify. And if one of them is not, yeah, is not part of your vocabulary, you can add it in. What? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, something like that. That's great. Yeah. All right. So number five, we have the so you did the double surround dopio. So I thought of the half double surround. So mm. this is actually it it's encompassed in the dopio in your first one, but I this, love how that's a thing. Already. Like seven minutes ago, that was not a thing. Now, yeah, it's, no. now it's part of the standard this, vernacular. This is the half half double the, or the half dopio or the, the, the semi-dopio. Semi-fredo-dopio. And, and it's Fredo, just, my son, you let me down. If we're surrounding the C, it's starting either from above or below by a whole step. Yeah. And you can either surround it then with a half step, either from below or above, or you can surround it with two half steps yep. and then a half step above or below what i like about this one is this is really gets you can be put in the middle of the line first of all yeah that's where I, that's where i think this one shines like it's all over the place like you can just throw these in kind of at at random on any target note that you can if, think of. I mean, if you throw them at the right time like you are you're talking it's like you're back on 52nd street no, it's but 1949 it, it does this 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 particular one i think is one of the ones that can really give you that like that sound that it does, lilt, it does you know what i mean yeah i mean if and if if you feel like you don't have it you don't quite have the feel and the accents right adding a couple of these in there especially in the middle of your line it's easier to learn these at the beginning of the line because yeah. you can kind of say like you can practice and say, okay, every line I'm going to do over rhythm changes or Donna Lee or whatever bebop thing you're doing, you say, I'm going to start every phrase. So it'd be like, you know. But instead of just playing that, you're like, everyone. It's a very conscious way of practicing, but it's a good way to start to infuse that sound at the beginning of your phrases then it'll start to come in the middle of the phrases just deploy it at random that's right <laughs> all right so number six i have uh the diminished slash augmented chromaticism so this is a, a technique that i actually learned from uh barry harris just dropped that name. whoa bam right. um barry harris name dropped on the ground but you know we use these um mm -hmm. these diminished arpeggios or uh augmented arpeggios yeah um, and between each one of these, you can throw in chromaticism, either two notes between the diminished, right? B, C, D flat, then D, F, A flat, finish the diminished, or... What? Uh, finish the diminished. Finish the diminished. Or between 
Like if I'm doing a G augmented arpeggio, G, B, E flat to G, I could throw in from the G to the B. And, you know, they're all on the beat. They're all on a strong beat. Or from the diminished. And it doesn't matter which one you do. Like that's the beauty of it. It's, yeah. it's because they're all, these are two symmetrical systems. You can throw it between any two notes in the arpeggios. Nice. Yeah. Finish the diminish. I'm going to use that. So yeah, now I'm so, trying to think of famous Finnish people that are called the. So yeah, diminish. so Barry Harris talk about like, like da 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 ba da, like just throwing, and you can and he and he would say like you can go as far as you want. You know, you're still you're just a chromatic scale. Yeah, and then you throw throw in the uh, the diminish wherever you want or the augmented. Nice. So, yeah. Number seven, delay the harmony. For the melody. Oh, that's so good. Wait, how, how do you know? You haven't. Oh, I told you beforehand. That's yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> I happen to know a little bit about bebop myself. Okay, the best way I think I could describe this is just we're going to think about Donnelly because it's laid out in the melody. Donnelly, of course, based on Indiana. Indiana. The yeah. chord changes to Indiana, that, and then the melody. Or is that Ohio? I don't know. Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Something oh, it's Indiana. Indiana. Upper Midwest. Yeah. So we're going. Um, the melody, Donna Lee. Of course, you know, is basically a Charlie Parker solo, yep. if, as it were, yep. as you would do if you're an advanced bebop player from Kansas City, Kansas. Hey, hey. Um, as he was. So, but check out the melody. A flat major. F7, right? One, two, th- uh, one, two, three, four. A flat major. Oh, this is hard. Hold on. One, two. F7. F7. But what? The melody. We're still A flat major. A-flat is that major. legal? No. Yes. yes. <laughs> In Indiana, no. <laughs> Indiana, Kansas no. City, it is. <laughs> right. So the idea is Indiana, no. You know, if you're you know, we're stretching this a little bit. We're not going crazy with it unless you're Charlie Parker and or an advanced bebop player. But the idea is you have to know, you have to internalize the chord changes so that you can float anything above it. Now we've got an advantage for this delay as pianists, but anyone can like learn the basic stuff on the piano, root and shell or whatever, so that you, bam. Then when you improvise and you want to delay like the melodies delay, one, two, three, four. That's so hip. Yeah, and then yeah, you can yeah. practice it either like where you're actually, once you get the form, you're, where you're delaying the changes with your root notes as well, or your chords in your left hand, or you can just lock that into the correct ones and then yeah, float yeah. above. Oh, either man. way, you'll start to get that kind of independence that you need. I love it. And you know, you hear the bebop masters do this all the time. They would delay these changes. Exactly. Because, you know why? Because you don't have to do some kind of square robot voice <laughs> uh, to, to put everything, right. you know, in in a in some kind of like grid system. Because it sounds right. It sounds bebop is is like it, it's a it's a language that's joyous and can float above. Like you you think about these changes. A lot of times we look at the page and we're like, it has to fit in here because I'm a robot. It's four bars, four bars. Yeah, yeah. But but interesting melodies can start and finish at any time. And the harmony, the more that you, even if you're floating the rhythm over the changes, but you're always shifting exactly when the chord changes. And that's a little trick. Like a lot of times people don't catch this because they're like, I got the feel, I got the vibe. But you can always tell a more intermediate player when they always, as you said, um, stick to the grid for the harmony. For sure. And you know, that's exactly right. That's what makes the music human is when we kind of set up expectations for this grid yeah. and then go beyond it in a way that's surprising and human. You know, people often compare bebop to like Baroque music or Bach or something like yeah. that. But when I think about Bach's music, I think about someone who was a master of creating these grids, you know, these harmonic and melodic grids, and then who would do something completely human that's right. and out of like out of left field. And you're Break like, the rules. What? Break the rules. And it would always give you stank face. Straight parallel fifths. For sure. Against the law. Against his own rules, yeah. Still did it, but it sounded good. Exactly. Yeah. So. That's where it's that's where it's fun. That's, that's fun. where the fun stuff is. Yeah. So experiment with this, you know, at first just a couple of beats and just play your phrases and let them organically end without you feeling like I have to shift to the harmony that I'm on now. Awesome. But you have to but you gotta know the form will, really that, good to do this. This is the thing. That's right. You have to actually be able to play yeah. on the grid before you can play off it. See how we see how we do that? We're just like, yeah, have fun or whatever. But then we flip it back with a little dogmatic. dogmatic. <laughs> we're about to get dogmatic yeah. on yeah. you. Be one of the cats. But but dogmatic. What? Only play on the grid until you're a human. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Deploy now. Okay. Changes. Okay. Uh, so today we're sponsored by Open Studio Jazz. Go there for a ton of stuff about bebop. We have Beat the Bebop Pack. Do you, what do you know about that? 
I, I have love like the Bebop pack. People like you and Sean Jones. I and hate me, but I like the Greg Bebop Hutchinson pack. Greg Hutchinson and yes. Peter Sprague. Talking about Bebop. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's a nice little combination. Let's link to that, the Bebop pack, because um, we, that was a really big thing when it first came out, and it's kind of flying under the radar. But the idea is we took really organic lessons from different courses, from all different instruments, but things that could apply if you just want to get... Like, it's fun to kind of work on Bebop for a couple of weeks. Like, you're still practicing other stuff, yeah. but you're practicing the language, and then you start to... It's better than saying, like, I'm going to go in a time warp and dress up in a zoot suit and pretend like it's Bebop, the days of Bebop. Don't do that. That's corny. But how do you bring this language and pull it into modernism? So when you see Sean Jones talk about soloing over Cherokee, yeah. he's not going back in time. He's taking the language, updating it, and placing it in a modern style that's super hip. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you're going to become, like, a straight Bebop musician. It just right. means that, like, you're learning part of... The American improvised music that is super important. Exactly. All Good right. stuff. Good so stuff. what's our bonus? Oh, our bonus. Okay, this one is is kind of fun, and um, I think I think some folks will know it, but if not, this will be a nice one. So if we well, if we stay in the same key here, A flat major, and like normally we're gonna get all these opportunities for two, five, one, and you might be like, or oh, so maybe a little longer, one bar each. That would be kind of a typical thing to play, bebop yeah, yeah. style. But what about? Oh, I don't know. My, my, my so cheeks just swelled. That's right. Whoa, Ooh. my lips curled. So we're just going half step up. Ooh. We're just doing a little half step up. So yeah. we got one bar. So we got to contract everything a little bit. So we yeah. got one bar of B minor seven, two beats each to E7, two beats, and then B flat minor for two beats, and then E flat seven. Simple. Yeah. But we're floating a melody over it that's organic and connects it. That's the key to this. You don't want to be like, I am in the grid because oh, I'm a bebop robot. Terrible. No, terrible. It's like. That's nice. Yeah, and uh, that's right. But I mean, like, you can. A little, a little bit of well placed chromaticism from one of our early ones. <laughs> this road does be not sound like bebop at all. What about this? And, and then if you combine that with a little bit of chromaticism and a little bit of delayed yeah. and don't feel like you got to hit the grid, then you'll be onto something. And you don't have to always, like, play the harmony in your left hand either. So if I'm going kind of a thing like that it could be or you could go oh that sounds great yeah that sounds because great because you're floating it quickly and you're connecting with the melody and the rhythm so you don't have to worry about shifting it i love it awesome yeah. well this is a great episode uh hit us well, up well let's let the people tell us that uh, don't we, get too excited we're, we're we feel like we're it's confident. good we're okay, confident. We're confident. and until next time deploy now you'll hear it